Hello, you get her. Or you get her. This is what happens when you pass some of the harshest anti-LGBT legislation in the world. A man bloodied and beaten in Uganda by vigilantes. His sexuality outlawed. For years, the government has ramped up rhetoric against the LGBT minority. And it's long been an obsession for President Museveni, who's been in power for nearly 40 years. What have the homosexuals got to do with it? You promote some homosexuality, you, you think homosexuality is an alternative way of life. The anti-homosexuality bill 2023. That rhetoric was ramped up when Parliament passed and Museveni signed a new repressive set of anti-LGBT laws this year. It introduced the death penalty for what was dubbed aggravated homosexuality, a vague term which punishes any person engaging in same-sex relations with someone who's elderly or disabled. Inducted or forced into the act of homosexuality. Charities which collate evidence of attacks have documented hundreds of incidents in the first three months, a clear increase with arrests and evictions now being made. The order to leave your home can be for having, quote, homosexual visitors. We've also had uh, incidents of where even when you own the property itself, when you're not renting, the local authorities can still uh, force you out of that particular location just so that they could, quote unquote, erase homosexuality from uh, their areas. And then there's this attack on a trans woman on the outskirts of the capital, Kampala. All this a wider climate of fear and repression, where citizens are faced with hateful messages in public. The World Bank has stopped sending aid to Uganda, and the United States has imposed travel restrictions on Ugandan officials who support the Anti-Homosexuality Act. Well, with me now is the activist Frank Mugisha, who is currently in London to ask for support from the UK government. Thanks for coming in. And this new law is punishable by the death penalty. What, what is it like to be a LGBT person in Uganda right now? It is very uh, difficult to be an LGBTQ person in Uganda right now. Prior to the introduction of the law, the anti-gay groups that are heavily supported by extreme religious groups from the US radicalized Ugandans into hatred. So before when the law was introduced, Ugandans were already um, hating on LGBTQ persons. So after the introduction of the law, almost every person who is either openly gay or perceived to be LGBTQ is worried and scared. And you're speaking out with, with great courage. I mean, but do you fear for your own safety in Uganda right now with such extreme measures being dished out? Yes, I am. I've been worried for my life for a very long time. I'm petrified. Uh, last year, my organization was shut down by the government. I was singled out. I received death threats. I had to stay into hiding because I couldn't go out easily because I was being identified. And most of this hate was happening on our local social media, on TikTok and WhatsApp groups that are almost accessed by almost every Ugandan. I mean, you've spoken about the role of US evangelicals going back a few years, but I mean, this sort of state-sponsored homophobia, there are fears that it spreads, aren't there, across East Africa. What is driving this now in 2023? The radicalization, really, of um, Africans into thinking that homosexuality is Western. And of course, there's a lot of evidence and history that homosexuality has always existed on the continent. But um, extreme American evangelicals have convinced our politicians and religious leaders. They also partner with the most highly placed politicians. Right, and we're talking about politicians, because you've been meeting a politician today in the UK, the Foreign Office Minister, Andrew Mitchell. We heard that the World Bank is taking action. You know, it's not giving Uganda loans anymore. Did you get any assurances from the UK government? Uh, the UK government has expressed some commitment we definitely want them to do more. So my meeting with uh, the Minister for Development and Africa, um, Right Honorable Andrew Mitchell, was to ask for the UK to step up and do more. And we want to see the UK doing more, not only on Uganda, but even on other countries. Did you come away from that meeting with a sense they will do something tangible, really, that matters, the UK government? My feeling after the meeting was this commitment. 
I feel the UK government will make some commitments. Some commitment, but that doesn't sound too encouraging given the scale of what's going on. And you've got President Museveni there saying, you know, nobody will move us. Will it make any difference? We hope that the UK government really steps up, not only on holding accountable government, but also the very extreme homophobic politicians and those violating human rights, not only of LGBT persons, but even broader human rights. So holding those individual politicians accountable would be something that we'd want to see as well. Frank Mejia, thanks so much for coming in to speak with us. Thank you. Thank you.